This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, a historic Dunedin home is emerging from decades of disrepair in one of Dunedin's most affluent suburbs. A Central Otago District Council spokesman has a warning for anyone caught illegally felling trees on council land. And National Poetry Day was celebrated with poems for patients at the Dunedin Public Hospital. Good evening, I'm Holly Buchanan. In breaking news, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has sacked South Dunedin MP Claire Curran from Cabinet and accepted her offer to resign following a second failure to properly declare a meeting. The Prime Minister fronted the media a short time ago. I brought you here uh, to let you know that I have made the decision to remove Claire Curran from Cabinet. Uh, as of today, she will also uh, has uh, agreed uh, and indeed offered up uh, her portfolios of Government Digital Services and Open Government. The portfolio of Government Digital Services will go to the Honourable uh, Megan Woods uh, and the portfolio of Open Government will be uh, given uh, to Chris Hipkins, our Minister for State Services. The reason that I have made this decision and that uh, Minister Curran offered up those two portfolios uh, was as a result of information I received on Monday. Uh, Minister Curran uh, had a uh, meeting uh, in February uh, which she did not uh, include in her diary and which was subsequently not included in a written question uh, that was answered to the opposition. The meeting in question was held between herself and uh, a Mr Derek Henley. Mr Derek Henley wanted to meet with Minister Curran to express uh, and to ask questions about the role of Chief Technology Officer. That was a role that was advertised uh, in, at the end uh, of last year, uh, but was not subsequently filled. It was re-advertised re uh, earlier this year. The fact that Minister Curran met with uh, Derek Henley, who became a candidate in that role, in and of itself is not the issue. Uh, people all of the time who wish to look into the potential of applying for roles will seek further information from potential employers. The issue here is that Ms Curran failed to record that meeting and failed to subsequently include it in a written question. Uh, that creates an impression and a perception uh, that lacks transparency and that is not something that I will tolerate, particularly from a Minister for Open Government. For more, visit odt.co.nz and read the full coverage in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. A historic Dunedin home is emerging from decades of disrepair in one of Dunedin's most affluent suburbs. The Tolkien Avenue house has been bought by television presenter Melanie Kerr, who now lives in Dunedin. Busy cleaning her newly acquired home. TV presenter Melanie Kerr putting some elbow grease into restoring a Maori Hill house that's fallen into disrepair. While much of Dunedin's Tolkien Street is decidedly upmarket, Kerr says she stumbled across this 89-year-old rundown mansion while on a nine-month stay in Dunedin. Two weeks into our nine months, we just decided we loved it so much, we're never going back to Whangaparaua. And then, as it transpires, we found this beautiful home fell completely in love with her, um, very luckily won her at tender and now for the rest of my life I think I'm going to be rubber gloves on cleaning this baby. So. Despite the rough appearance, she says the house's bones are still good. The walls are all straight and true, the doors and windows open easily and so it's really just kind of superficial and a little bit of modernising, although we're not going to change any of the structure of the homes. As Kerr and her husband work at clearing the overgrown section and cleaning up inside, she's been enjoying showing the house to interested people. I don't know, maybe 50 people through in the last week just passes by saying, oh we love her, can we have a look? And I'm like, come, I'm so happy to be able to share her with people. And while the couple could stand to make a profit over the purchase price of $575,000, the plan is to live in it as a family home. In Dunedin, for the South Today. 
A rescuer says a snowboarder seriously injured after falling about 200 metres down a steep slope on Ben Lomond near Queenstown could have been killed. A Southern Lakes rescue helicopter was sent from Queenstown and the man was taken to Lakes District Hospital. Emergency services say two Queenstown men were ski touring on Ben Lomond when the 30-year-old fell on the southeastern side of the mountain. He was partly buried in snow but his friend managed to dig him out. His injuries are described as moderate to serious. The helicopter was unable to land so performed a one skid unload when one skid rests on the ground and a long line was used to extract the injured man. A Central Otago District Council spokesman is warning that anyone caught illegally felling trees on council-owned land can expect to be slapped with a criminal charge. The council says the problem is ongoing and is now taking a stronger stance. The Pines in Alexandra, just one area that's being targeted by illegal tree fellers in Central Otago. The District Council say it's an ongoing issue. Um, this is a good example of um, some illegal tree cutting going on in this block with people essentially stealing firewood. Um, it's becoming more and more of a regular occurrence. Kerr says there's been 16 trees felled in this area alone. That's about four to five thousand dollars worth of firewood. And he's warning people the days of leniency are over. So we'll be taking a, a stronger line in the future and essentially this is theft. And in the future we'll, we will be asking the police to um, take action um, with prosecution. Kerr says the council will also pass on any information they've been given, including photos of car registrations. He says they want to educate the public taking trees from council land is not OK. So people should realise that this is public land, the trees are owned by the public and the ratepayers, and when they're felled, the income will come back to the ratepayers. So people are essentially helping themselves illegally to um, everybody else's trees. Culprits caught in the past have been forced to give the cut wood to people in need. Now the punishment could be a theft charge, which comes with a maximum of 17 years imprisonment. In Alexandra, the South today. And hospitals around the South have been treating their patients to a printed out poem with their lunch in celebration of National Poetry Day. Entitled Poems in the Waiting Room, the project aims to help brighten the day of people staying in hospitals. A poetry card along with her lunch. A Dunedin Hospital patient is entertained with a poem entitled Penguins. Oh, it's really cool. It actually made you smile and, you know, cheer, kind of cheers you up. And, you know, kind of not a lot changes in your day. You see the same four walls and, you know, and to actually get something that's a little bit different is, is, quite, is quite nice. Poems for the waiting room founder Ruth Arneson says poetry can have a positive effect in a hospital environment. I just think if you're in there and you're worrying perhaps about what's going to be happening or you're, you're feeling a little bit down maybe, you've written a poem and you read it and maybe you get a smile or maybe it just makes you think of something else, it takes your mind away for a minute. What's going on around you? This is the first year poetry's been brought to hospital patients, but Arneson hopes it will become a regular fixture. We'll wait till we get some feedback from the hospital about this, and then um, I'd quite like to make it an annual event, do a collaboration with the hospital. National Poetry Day was established in 1997 and is held on the fourth Friday of August each year. In Dunedin, for the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, Queenstown gets set to welcome winter pride festival goers and Pacific Island culture is celebrated in Omaru. Hi, it's me again. It's that time of year. It's our season, winter clearance. It's our greatest ever. 50% off all these jackets and vests, knitwear, dress and casual trousers, warm shirts and business shirts, suits and sports jackets. 50% off. Three stores, greatest ever winter season clearance, Alex Campbell menswear. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. So, all three stores, 50% off, it's our greatest ever winter clearance. Roslyn Mowers and Heating are your local Massport heating agents and offer you a competitive quote on complete Massport fire installation. 
Come and see the Massport Cromwell Ultra Low Emission Burner in action. See you in store soon. Step into Shop on Carroll and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Too late to sow seeds? Don't despair, the solution is at hand. Call Ready Lawn today for your year-round lawn needs. Call now on 03 486 1819. The Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We offer Manage My Health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. Garage Door Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garage Door's quality service. Garage Door Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoro Valley Road, visit www.garadoors.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Welcome back. Southland's Hub Ridge Track is one of three shortlisted to be New Zealand's Great Next Walk. The 61-kilometre Fiordland Loop Track has been announced as one of the front runners by the Department of Conservation. The other two are the Queen Charlotte Track in the Marlborough Sounds and Northland's Te Paki Coastal Track. The Hump Bridge Track takes three days to complete and begins and ends in Te Wai Wai Bay near Tuatapiri. A final decision will be made late in the year with the winner set to become part of the Great Walks Network by the 2021 season. Queenstown businesses have rolled out the rainbow decorations ready to give a vibrant welcome to Winter Pride Festival goers next week. Tour operator Go Orange has unveiled its rainbow buses, complete with Winter Pride branding ahead of the festival. Unveiling the new Go Orange Pride buses ahead of next week's Winter Pride Festival in Queenstown. There are currently two buses in circulation with another potentially being decorated ready for the festival. These buses are going to be riding up the remarks in Kadrona um, on our six festival days uh, over the biggest Winter Pride Festival uh, that's ever hit Queenstown. The annual festival is now in its seventh year. It was renamed Winter Pride a few months ago after beginning life as Gay Ski Week. It's expected to attract more than 2,000 participants for a week-long celebration of the LGBTI community. King says this year the festival is bigger than ever before. You'll see stores uh, right through town already getting ready, getting dressed for Pride. As well as the buses, Winter Pride flags have been hung on lampposts along Shotover Street to mark the build-up to the festival, with local businesses also showing their support for the event. Uh, we have six festival days on the mountains, uh, theme days, onesie day, ski charity race day, we've got hero day, you name it, um, it's going to be awesome fun. DJs on the mountains this year, pride zones are going to be awesome. Organisers have received funding for the event from Queenstown Lakes District Council with over 80 volunteers stepping up to make sure it runs smoothly. In Queenstown, the South today. 
A University of Otago lecturer is pleased to see Pacific Island culture being celebrated in Omaru. Dr. Talesia Kalavite visited a Fia Fia night in North Otago and says Pacifica culture is alive and well in the region. Pacifica colour comes to Awamaru. As newcomer to Otago, Dr. Talesia Kalavita says watching children at the annual North Otago Schools FIFA evening. She says educating young people of Pacific Island descent is important. Uh, my passion is to set forward our Pacific students and get them to succeed in whatever they, they do in, in education. She worked in Tonga for two decades before migrating to New Zealand and says the night of celebrating culture, dance and indigenous knowledge helps young people connect with their roots. Um, it is a great um, privilege and honour for me to be here tonight to witness the work that every um, Pacific Island parents and students as well as non-Pacific peoples who are here to help our Pacific peoples. The evening had a competitive element as well. Those who received awards on the nights honoured their parents, church, community and collective history. I think we all have our own stories and success stories. Um, and I think with Pacific peoples, um, we, we learn um, with love, we work with love, we work with our, our people when we tend to do it in love. Around 150 pupils from eight Oamaru schools performed on the night, watched over by 200 people. In Oamaru, for the South Today. After the break on the South Today, tyre slashes are at large in the greater Dunedin region and barking up a storm at the Chateau Creek Tavern. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. Hi, it's me again. It's that time of year. It's our season. Winter clearance. It's our greatest ever. 50% off all these. Jackets and vests, knitwear, dress and casual trousers, warm shirts and business shirts, suits and sports jackets. 50% off. Three stores. Greatest ever winter season clearance. Alex Campbell menswear. Every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. So, all three stores, 50% off, it's our greatest ever winter clearance. Roslyn Mowers and Heating are your local Massport heating agents and offer you a competitive quote on complete Massport fire installation. Come and see the Massport Cromwell Ultra Low Emission Burner in action. See you in store soon. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Too late to sow seeds? Don't despair, the solution is at hand. Call Ready Lawn today for your year-round lawn needs. Call now on 03 486 1819. The Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We often manage my health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754.
Welcome back. Some serial tyre slashes appear to be at large in the greater Dunedin region. Senior Sergeant Trevor Thompson says they've had a run of slashed tyres, especially in Mosgiel. The attacks happened overnight on Wednesday, two in Severn Street and three in Thames Street, where either one or all of the tyres were slashed. Thompson says similar slashings have been reported in Green Island's Centennial Avenue, while another occurred down the road in Mulford Street, Concord. He says they're not saying they're connected, but would like to know if anyone has seen any suspicious activity. Masters and their pooches flocked to Chateau Creek recently in a bid to claim the title of top dog. About 20 men and women were involved in the 31st annual Chateau Creek Bark Up, including the defending champion. Just some of the contestants in the annual Chateau Creek Bark Up in the local tavern, where some... <laughs> were more vocal than others. One farmer resorting to singing in an attempt to get his dog to bark. And then there was this dog, not even wanting to stand up, much to the shame of its owner, who has to perform some sort of a forfeit. He climbs onto the table and is presented with some liquid in a dog bowl and has to bark and then drink from the bowl. Fortunately, other dogs were better behaved, jumping up and barking, as required. <laughs> this year, the Bruce Duncan Memorial Trophy went to A.D. van der Voort and his dog Bryn of Ettrick. The criteria is pretty simple. Bark the loudest. It cost contestants $5 to enter the annual event, with proceeds going to Farmstrong, an organisation designed to give farmers the skills and resources to live well, farm well and get the most out of life. In Central Otago, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. A historic Dunedin home is emerging from decades of disrepair in one of Dunedin's most affluent suburbs as a former TV personality and her husband spruce it up. A Central Otago District Council spokesman is warning anyone caught illegally felling trees on council-owned land could face punitive measures. And National Poetry Day is celebrated with verse at Dunedin Public Hospital, thanks to the poems in the waiting room group. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Paul. Hi Holly. Uh, I've got a photo tonight, not quite as exciting as the Chateau Creek Bark Up, I don't think, but this is... Uh, oh, that's an interesting shot. This young guy, August 1978, Warren Young, and on his skateboard with a homemade sail going along Cumberland Street, and uh, apparently had quite a fresh sow-wester behind him. I'm not sure if he got there a lot faster, <laughs> but... Um, so yeah, that's on the opinion that's page fantastic. tomorrow. Nice, nice photo. Uh, lots of politics in the paper tomorrow. Yes, course, There's will a be. new Australian Prime Minister. I think that's the sixth one in less than eight years. Oh, wow. Um, so we, we've got an editorial on that yes, and the great. implications on New Zealand and of course also Claire Curran yes. late this afternoon um, so she's no longer in cabinet we'll mm. have a lot uh, a full report on that that'll be on the front page tomorrow so okay. uh, that's interesting um, of course the mix being a, a Saturday so uh, very interesting big big section on the class act kids like where they are the 2008 uh, class so 10 yeah. years on where That'd they be really interesting. Up. Yeah. And of course that's ahead of Class Act this week, I think it's on Thursday. Okay. Uh, and also in the mix we have the normal food, foodie stuff, how to make a prawn laxa, I think it was. Um, oh, Roasted laxa. chicken thighs, laxa. Ah, roasted yes. chicken thighs with oregano parmesan paste. <sighs> Sounds, sounds good. quite nice. Sounds quite and nice, doesn't it? Yeah, and a chocolate and date meringue. I know, that sounds ah, great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, better than my tea tonight, mm. probably. Sounds great. <laughs> so, yeah, lots there, but um, yeah, a lot of breaking news that yeah. we'll be covering for, for in the morning. So. Yeah, well, thanks very much. Good. It sounds okay. fantastic. All right. And time now, of course, for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with tonight's southern view of bath time for ducks and seagulls in the octagon. Looking at the situation, a fine weekend ahead with plenty of sunshine but cool temperatures as southwesters die out. 
Looking to the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect some cloud and a high of 13 degrees. Across to the northeast now, Nelson and Blenheim are in for partially cloudy weather and a high of 17 degrees. Looking at Canterbury now, cloudy in Kaikoura and a high of 11. Christchurch has rain and a high of 12 degrees, while those in Ashburton can plan for cloudy conditions and a high of 10. Heading to the south now, expect moderate southwesters becoming fine and a high of 8 degrees for Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden. And across to central Otago, mostly fine with light southwesters for Alexandra, Queenstown, Wanaka and Tiano. And you can all expect highs between 7 and 8 degrees. In northern Otago, light southwesters and becoming fine for Omaru, Timaru, Omarama and Twizel with highs of 7 to 9 degrees. And Dunedin now, showers clearing tonight with southwesters and an overnight low of 5. Becoming fine and sunny tomorrow with cloud slowly clearing and sunny periods increasing with a high of 9 and a low of 2. Fine and sunny on Sunday with light northerlies and a high of 11 degrees. In Vicargill, showers clearing tonight with an overnight low of 5. Fine at the start of the day and then becoming fine and sunny tomorrow with cool westerlies with a high of 9 and a low of 2 degrees. Fine and sunny on Sunday with scattered cloud and moderate westerlies with a high of 11 degrees. And that's it from the team here at The South Today. For the latest news from the Southern Region, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube and at channel 39.co.nz and odt.co.nz. Thanks for watching. Do join us again tomorrow. Good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.